I'm from a gritty little town in the Midwest, and I do stories about the school board or the mayor or, or some con man who's in our community. Investigative reporter Tom Merriman has been with Cleveland's WJW Fox 8 News I team for the last four years. The DuPont Columbia juror cited Merriman for resourceful and relentless reporting of municipal misbehavior and for holding public officials accountable. You watch newscasts in, a, in any market. You put newscasts on, they all look the same. It's crime, it's weather, some breaking story. What sets you apart? What we found is that in-depth investigative reporting is something that can be a difference maker for people. Tom Merriman did not study journalism. Rather, he is a graduate of Harvard Law School. When he returned to his native Cleveland, he became a deputy attorney general who prosecuted drug dealers and ran sting operations. Merriman says he prefers journalism. The I-Team's Tom Merriman joins us with a blockbuster development in his ongoing investigation into waste in the Cleveland schools, Tom. Well, Bill and Stacy, over the past few months, we've raised serious questions about the management of the school district's transportation department. This is a story of frozen feet, empty seats, and whether a school district cheats. Beginning in October of 2004 and running throughout the school year, Merriman and his team filed 22 segments. It all started with a simple phone call from somebody saying, you know, they got a couple hundred extra bus drivers down here. You ought to check it out. Every day, 233 yellow school buses transport about 10,000 children. Behind the wheel, 233 certified bus drivers. State law requires the district to maintain a bullpen of spare drivers. For Cleveland, that would mean about 23 spares. This year, they've set a new record. They don't employ 50 spares. The I-Team found taxpayers are footing the bill for 206. We got some video inside the bus depot to see these folks playing charades and shooting pool. When the I-Team showed up unannounced at 8.45 in the morning at the East 49th Street Depot, most of the workers scattered and hid from the I-Team camera. Are you guys subs? But uncovering a room full of paid but idle drivers was only the beginning. Frankly, the gotcha story of the little bus driver who showed up and did his job, but his job wasn't to do anything. That's not the investigation. The investigation is the decision makers, the people who were paid, the, in this case, big bucks, to make sound decisions about how they're spending money. I'm telling you, these are not ghost jobs. But you have no records to back that up. What they do every minute of the day. I'm just looking for a record to show that they, they've done anything. And unfortunately, the... To me, the real story began at that point. That's why it there's like When we requested the records, we said, give us all the buses that have the most kids. Just start counting kids. But stop number one produces only one rider. And over at stop number two, St. Timothy's... 13 more children get on the bus. A grand total of 14 riders. That's 53 fewer kids than the district claims. In November, we found Mr. Knox spending his off hours tooling around town in a big yellow school bus, cruising the streets and shopping for groceries with a woman who looked a bit old for elementary school. Hey, I'm wondering, are you running a taxi service no. or what? No, this guy. Is hey, young lady, can I ask you a question? No. What grade are you in? On Thursday, teams from across the area converged on Lakewood Stadium for the district track meet. Every suburban public high school stepped off a yellow school bus. The Cleveland team showed up in chartered coach buses and taxi cabs. Last year, taxpayers paid $777,000 so kids could take taxis to extracurricular activities. There is a context here that made this story particularly egregious to people who live in the city of Cleveland. The district was in absolute fiscal crisis, slashing bus service, laying off now over 900 teachers. All I know is that the teachers are being laid off and we need to protect the classroom first. Thousands of children continue to walk through what has already proven to be a long, cold winter. We can tell stories about real people impacted by wrongdoing 
it forces government, it forces decision makers to address it. Is this the type of management that you would expect in the district? Absolutely not. As questions began to be asked about their practices, they began to cover up what they were doing. And that led them to trouble. I don't think anybody in my office, especially me, um, and members of my staff would attempt to defraud the State Department of Education. So how did it happen? They don't want to do a sit-down interview with me anymore. They've had it. They're not going to sit face-to-face -face and answer questions. We bring two cameras to a press conference. Our goal is to try to transform that press conference into a one-on-one -on -one interview so that every statement can be challenged, verified, followed up, and that's why we do it. And that's, it creates a dynamic which, in this case, seemed to get under the CEO's skin. In response to the I-Team reports, the Cleveland School Board launched an internal investigation and revamped the school transportation system. By, by cutting the spare bus drivers, they saved over $3 million. When we exposed that they weren't counting kids, that the numbers that they were submitting to the state were bogus, the state came in and ordered the district to pay back $729,000. By the end, the voters so rejected this administration, she announced that she's resigning, she's leaving. The mayor, because of her perceived ties to the CEO of the school district, lost her bid for re-election. I had a sense being in government and working with politicians, the role that journalists play in the conscience of public officials. That was, did the bogus school numbers impact Jane Kim? That was outrageous. To me, that's the most important role we play. That when you make a commitment to do these kinds of stories, the local officials in your community have you in the back of their mind every time they have to make a decision about something that may be inefficient, that may be corrupt, or may just be something the public would be outraged if they knew.